Good morning, everybody. You know what time it is. Come on in. Happy 4th of July. I'm out here on this hot, humid morning. Get ready to get out here on the grill. I'm out here on my back porch right now. We're going to preview this one day, but I got it all fixed up. So we're going to focus on uh, cooking this food today, though. So we're going to come right on down off the back porch. And we're going to go right down here to the grill area. Okay, got my grill all set up. You see, I've had my cold charcoal out here. Got my trash bags. The reason I'm telling you this is it's key and very important that you get yourself prepared before you start cooking. Try to get all your stuff out here that you're going to need so you don't have to go back and forth. Because me, I cook on my grill just like I do in the kitchen. So I have everything all laid out and prepped up uh, to get it going. So sorry about that. I had to shift the camera a little bit. Okay, I've got, if you see right here, I got my meat over here to the side. I'm getting ready to uh, cut these bags open and get it on there as soon as those coals are ready. So I got my scissors ready. So all I have to do is clip those bags open and get my meat on the grill. Okay, now I started this fire probably almost 30 minutes ago. It was a big blazing thing. So let me tell you this. If you're not used to cooking on the grill and dealing with uh, lighter fluid and all that kind of stuff, because I still use lighter fluid, you can get these little canister things that you buy in the store that you don't have to use lighter fluid. But in any case, whatever fire that you set for your meat, please make sure you uh, just are very, very careful with it. Because even like cooking on the stove, it's no play thing. It's real serious. What I'm going to try to do now is let you see what these coals look like. Because in the beginning, it, they were just black charcoal. Then you squirt, of course, the, the um, lighter fluid. And then you go ahead and light it. You have, get you a, a good one of those long wand type lighters. Don't try to do it with little short matches. Okay. This is um, probably, uh, well, I've used most of that bag. And that is a... About a 15 pound bag of charcoal. So I've used all maybe a couple pounds still left in there. So my grill is pretty good size. So I've lined up each side with some good charcoal and got it lit. But you see there how those things are, you see those red embers through there? Don't put your meat on when you see that red. Wait till all those coals turn nice and white. Still, I've still probably got 15 20 minutes before I can put that meat on because what will happen that meat will start to burn because guess what it has some fat on it. that fat will start dripping down there and you have a whole big mess so you don't want to do that so when it's time I'm going to come back and I'm going to let you see how I get my meat on the grill I got my forks and my forceps and my pans and uh, this is my little mopping sauce All right there I use a, a chocolate chip cookie container it doesn't matter because I'm going to throw it out when I finish Okay, all that is in there is probably, let's see, I got six cups of water, a cup of vinegar, uh, a tablespoon of salt, uh, some barbecue seasoning like in, that I made up myself with barbecue sauce mix, uh, that one that you buy, I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, when you, any barbecue sauce mix that you want to use, just throw it in there, stir it up, and get it going. Of course, this is my little table over here that I'll use for other stuff. And this brush here, when you get through burning those coals off, it'll burn all that old, what you call, creso off. So you want to scrape all that off and rust and anything else. And what I'm going to do when everything gets all burned off, I'm going to come back with a, a cloth. It's going to have some oil on it. And I'm going to rub those, rub that griddle down. So we'll have it all ready. This, this grill here is a really good grill. One that my husband bought probably 15 years ago. Um, and we kept it pretty good. We've reshined it, redone it, and has sentimental value now. I've had a new handle put on. I had a new tray put down there. So it's served its purpose, really. But I'm going to keep on letting it serve because it has sentimental value. Now that my husband is not here to help me do this, he taught me how to do all this stuff. So I'm good to go. This feels just like in the kitchen cooking on my stove. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get back in the house, see what those grandkids are doing. And then when I come back, I'll finish showing you what we're going to do next. Okay, so stay tuned and we'll get some other tips going. But I tell you what, before I sign off, since I'm videoing and I'm coming in the house anyway. Now, you know I got to get in the house and I got to do... My baked beans, my mac and cheese, and all that stuff. See how I'm already prepped? Got my water boiling for that macaroni. Get ready to open those beans. And I'm going to do it. Now, see, you got my recipe for these two already. So, this is a staple for 4th of July. So, I'm sort of just uh, 
doing a walkthrough before I actually start to cook. I'm doing my sous chef stuff. Remember now, every good cook has a good sous chef, and usually you're it, you're both. So we're going to sign off for right now, and then we're going to come back when I get ready to put those ribs on the grill. Remember, let those coals calm down. We don't want to see any red. We want to see white coals to get started because otherwise you're going to have burnt meat. Okay, so toodaloo for a minute or two. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Got the ribs on the grill. What about that? Look at that. Got those pork ribs there. Got those beef ones on the back there. Got some more pork over there. So I just sort of got them evenly distributed. So I got them on the grill. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to let them cook for about 15 minutes. I don't know if you can see that fire under there. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, see how white those coals are? But you can cool believe one thing, buddy. They are ready to cook. So got those ribs on the grill. Got them going. So ain't much else to do now. But uh, just let them cook. Uh, they're going to do a lot of smoking and when that fire builds up on them a little bit, they'll do some grilling So I'm going to keep them flipped and turned. So about every 15 minutes, that's me 10 minutes, you know, if I come out here and hear something I don't like I'll lift that lid and I've got my uh, I'll say my mop juice over here I have me a brush in there to brush those babies when I turn them over to keep them good and moist and I've got it all flavored up Remember I told you I've got uh, I think I told you maybe two cups of vinegar. I'm sorry, one cup of vinegar, two cups of water, a uh, tablespoon of salt, some barbecue seasonings. Just whatever you want to throw in there, whatever your palate likes. Squeeze you some lemon juice off in there just to get a good flavor going to keep those ribs nice and mopped, not with just plain water. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let the uh, lid down. I'm going to let them cook. And the other thing that I'm going to do too, if I can remember it right. Okay. I got a little thermometer on the top of here. You all can't see the little numbers on that, but when it gets up around 300 degrees under there, I'll go ahead and, and look at them again in about 10 minutes. So sort of watch your thermometer. Then last but not least, when these ribs come off, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, pork chops on. I'll do the pork chops last because they take less time to cook. So we're cooking now. We, all we got to do now is just flip them and turn them and know when to take them off. And I would say they're going to cook at least a couple of hours for my liking. Then after I get them off the grill, remember I told you, see this pan right here? That silver and gray colored pan? I'm going to put those ribs in there. And I'm going to run them through the oven for about 30 minutes. This part here is as old as my youngest daughter, which is 40 years old. That was that waterless cooking stuff make stuff real nice and tender so you might want to find you a pan like that to go ahead and make sure your ribs are good and fall off the bone tender uh, before you put them on the table so for right now I'm gonna ease on back into the kitchen because I got my water on for my cabbage that I'm gonna be doing some steamed cabbage and I'm gonna do of course my usual macaroni and cheese and baked beans on that little break that I took I already got my baked beans mixed up and ready to go into the oven so i'm just gonna run on back here in the kitchen and look at my shoes y'all these are official barbecue shoes i got on my official barbecue outfit here i am with my official hat sunglasses so i'm gonna turn it back around i'm the one arm bandit again no matter how much i have to cook seem like my help help is not here right now so my grands are leaving so i'm going to sign off and then i'll sign back on to show y'all what i'm doing in the kitchen bye she's one of the party people from last night they're leaving now so hold on just a second okay y'all this is part of my crew even though they're leaving out sometimes they're in when i'm cooking so when i get this all done later on this evening you might see them sitting around the table so y'all hang on for me okay toodaloo okay my lovelies i am back the ribs are cooking good i gotta do that first turn on them and uh, i'm gonna mop them up real good in fact the, some of them already came out and turned because they were on the back they were cooking a little bit so what you do before you actually turn your meat go ahead and mop them with this little paintbrush this is just a little dollar paintbrush that i bought and i've dedicated it to nothing 
but mopping ribs. You can't paint the walls with these folks. Once you start mopping ribs with them, earmark it for painting the ribs. That's all you need to do with this little brush here. Just paint that on there. And this is like every time I turn them, I will do this to them. Okay? So basically, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of hours. Um, of course, like I said, I've got to turn. I turn the rest of them. I'm going to turn this slab here, slab of baby bats. You see, I don't let mine get too far gone because when those ribs come off of there, I want them evenly cooked and pretty. I don't want no burn up, burnt spots and all that kind of stuff. They might get a little deeper brown, but I don't. I don't want to burn anything. So I continually turn and baste so that my ribs are cooked well. And that they're they're pretty because I like presentation as well. So basically, I'm done with what I'm going to show you with these ribs, except when I get ready to serve them up. But you put them, start them out on one side, mop them real good after about 15 minutes, and then you just flip them and mop them again. And then every time that you turn them, you mop them with your brush. Remember, not the brush you brush the wall, paint the wall with, but the brush that you bought for nothing but painting those ribs. And what we're doing is painting on flavor. So we're just going to keep these ribs cooking because they still got about another, oh, about an hour and 45 minutes yet to go. Uh, so I'm not going to take you through the entire, you know, two hours on the grill. But just to let you see where I get to at different stages so that you can pick up the process. It's basically an easy process because... Now I did another video that I'm going to be putting on. It's in a different part where I showed you how to clean those ribs and uh, dry rub them and get them ready to get on the grill. And that was like a day and a half ago. So this is the result of getting them out here on the grill. So we're going to say to Lou for a minute and we'll see you in a little while. Okay, I'm back. I just need to drop a few more nuggets of knowledge onto you. Remember I told you I had a thermometer on top of this grill and I've got the lid down and these ribs are basically, they're grilling but they're also smoking. And I noticed that um, my temperature was only at about 250. I want it up around 300, 325. So that means that I need to add a little bit more fuel to the fire, so to speak. So what I've done here, I have gone ahead and my grill, the way it's made, it has a front to it. So I can open this little front part. I don't know if you can see all the way in there, but anyway, that's where the coals go. Where you see I'm pointing in there. And what I've done, because those white coals are still hot and they're burning, you can just go ahead and add some more coals to uh, what's already doing. So just maybe, and I'm going to say I added probably 20 briquettes of charcoal to pump that fire up. Now I'm going to have to watch it because it may blaze. So keep you a bottle of water. I got me a little bottle of water. In case it blazes up, just let it up and sprinkle some water and the fire go right back down. But usually when you keep that top down, it'll keep that fire sort of at bay and it'll keep it down. But I want that heat to build up to at least 350 degrees because we want these ribs to cook all the way through and we want them good and smoked all at the same time and um, you know what mother nature is setting in y'all look it's a overcast day and guess what I feel some drops of rain so now I'm gonna tell you this I'm gonna go ahead and get my umbrella and let it up because if you're ever grilling and get caught out in the rain the rain is gonna put a damper on that heat under there so I'm gonna go ahead and get my umbrella going so that I can sort of cut off um, the threat of getting my uh, fire smoke but I think God's gonna work with me because he loves me so much he's gonna give me these two hours that I need to go ahead and finish this meat up but just in case the devil rears his ugly head today I am going to let up the umbrella and put it there anyway because it'll serve for me it'll keep the sun off of me but I just want to give you those nuggets about um, boning up that fire so you see how it's starting to smoke a little bit more that means that those briquettes that I put under there they're beginning to catch fire and that smoke is going to go on through that meat and it's going to be some kind of good so I'm going to sign off one more time and go ahead and get this umbrella going we'll see you shortly Okay, we're back. As you can see, those ribs are looking like they're ready for eating. But we got another couple of steps to go with them. Got to get them off of here, get them sauced down, throw them in the oven. And then when they come out, we're going to be ready to eat here in a little while. So 
still I got to do the pork chop so the ribs are ready to come out so you see what I mean by those ribs I love them golden brown even those uh, beef ribs they're a little bit hard to cook you have to kind of watch them when they're in pieces like that some of them got a little bit brown but when they go through that sauce that's all right we'll eat the brown with the red sauce so we're gonna get these ribs off and put those pork chops on and we're gonna be inside because it is smoking hot out here to Lou okay got them in the roasting pan ready to take them in get them sauced down and run through the oven so got a big old pan full look at that pan wow we're gonna eat up some ribs today and pork chops so hold on just a minute and I'll let you see what it looks like when I get those pork chops on the grill okay see how that fire's still burning a little bit down there and I believe those coals are hot enough that I'm going to be able to cook these pork chops without even having to do anything else to the fire so if your fire looks pretty much like that you can go ahead with your next thing these pork chops are going to have to cook probably maybe 20-25 minutes and then they're going to be inside so hang on just a second I'll show you when I put them on okay got these pork chops on the grill remember the other night well you don't remember because I haven't posted it yet but you'll see how I got them dry rubbed the same way I did the uh, ribs just dry rub them put them into uh, some freezer bags and threw them in the refrigerator so they've been sitting marinating for um, day and a half so that flavor is all the way through them remember I told you that's to me I call it dry briny those pork chops are going to stay on there for about 20 minutes I'm going to get them all spread out they're all packed together now so I think I got 15 or 20 of them so anyway I'm going to tune out for a minute get them all laid out there and let them cook about 10-12 minutes on each side sauce them down not sauce them down but I'm going to slather them down with my little marinade mix there and make sure that they're nice and juicy and tender because what we do with these beauties we put them between some light bread and we have us a good old smoked pork chop sandwich so see you in a little bit okay here I am inside finishing up some stuff by popular demand somebody wanted lemon pepper chicken so here it goes I got 15 chicken wings and eight chicken thighs on there and I've already sauteed I'm, I'm sorry I've already uh, seasoned them down I've got my lemon pepper seasoning on that for that amount I used probably a fourth cup of lemon pepper seasoning some fresh lemon that I squeezed over it of course I put some um, nice salt on it and I sprayed my pan with some of this uh, Sam's Club cooking spray so basically on these uh, lemon pepper chicken of course you know you got to wash it real good and what I actually did with this chicken I had already seasoned it when I did the other meat the other night so I'm just now putting these in the oven that is chicken wings and chicken thighs got 12 of the wings eight thighs lemon pepper seasoning some fresh lemon squeezed over them and sprinkle salt over them to taste um, the way I do mine most of the time is I'll go ahead and season my chicken ahead of time to let it sort of marinate over time so these have been sitting for about a day and a half in that season so either way you can do it because that seasoning is so good and so it's, it's so pungent that it'll go right through that chicken so I'm gonna run these in the oven for about an hour and a half and we're gonna be eating I know that wasn't a dog on fly to just flew across my screen uh, excuse me I digress okay anyway I'm getting ready to run these through the oven and let them cook for about an hour and a half and then when they come out they'll be all yummed up and ready to eat and as you can see I already got my mac and cheese and my baked beans they're about ready to come out so we're getting this dinner started so it is now well that's the time wrong it's probably 1 30 we got to eat this food by four o'clock so i got to get moving y'all and then i'm going to briefly show y'all what i'm going to put in that pot so we'll come back in a little bit too loose okay got the chicken in the oven cooking it at 375 along with the mac and cheese and the baked beans when i get those baked beans and mac and cheese out i'm going to turn that broiler on them for about 30 minutes so all cook time is going to be an hour and a half or so 30 minutes under the broiler and we're going to have to turn them a little bit and, and the juices that cook off of them i'm just going to mop that juice right back over them so we're going to let those go ahead and cook so see you soon okay as you can see we're just about done here on the grill those pork chops are ready to come off go inside and be eaten in a little while so you see how nice and golden brown they are my fire's still burning so if i wanted to put some hot dogs and hamburgers on there i've got plenty of fire but not doing hot dogs and hamburgers today we're going to leave it at that so we're just about done here on the grill all i got to do now is just get them off and get them inside okay to lose 
Okay, they're off the grill. I'm ready to go in. If you notice, my area is all cleaned up. That's the other thing about cooking. Clean as you go. See? Now all I got to do is get my chops, go inside, and I'm done. I don't have to clean up anything because as the day was going on, every time I came out, I took something inside with me. So my whole area is cleaned up. My grill is ready for the next time except for getting those ashes out of the bottom. And I am ready to go inside and cool off and get ready to eat this meal got a few more things to do inside and i probably got another hour and a half before everything's supposed to be ready around four and i think it's like 2 15 right now so i got a little bit of time left but the basic heavy things are cooked and ready to go in so hold on for a few more minutes that lemon pepper chicken is almost there. It's still on the first side. I've been baking it now for about 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and um, marinate it with, a, I'm going to take my brush and brush it real good. And then I'm going to flip it over and let it brown and crisp up on the other side. And by that time, it'll be done and ready to come out of the oven. As you can see, my mac and cheese and my baked beans are ready. So what I'm going to show you now is how to get some cabbage going. Somebody um, asked me about... Uh, some sauteed cabbage or stir fried cabbage but uh, in the interest of time today we're just going to do some steamed cabbage so what I've done here so far you know that green once you wash your cabbage and get it cut up the green the dark green leaves that are on the cabbage go ahead and cut those up and put them in your pan I've got some ham meat just regular old ham meat or you could do ham hocks or whatever and if you do ham hocks you know you got to cook them way ahead of time but this ham meat is from um, Another one of those hams that I cooked. Just had some sitting in the freezer. There it goes. Got some ham meat in there. I've got some vinegar in there. Put about a for. Okay, this is two head, two medium sized heads of cabbage because I got to feed lots of folks today. So that ham meat is probably um, half a pound of ham meat and two cups of water and um, hmm, let's say. A uh, tablespoon full of salt, and you know I got to throw some brown sugar, fourth a cup of brown sugar to blend out that juice. So when it cooks down, those cabbage will be nice and savory, or leave the brown sugar off, whatever you prefer. I prefer the brown sugar, so I put in brown sugar. I've already got these cabbage chopped, washed, and chopped over here. Uh, you just basically wash your cabbage, cut them in fours, and then chop them up just like that. That's all the chopping they need, like that. Make sure you take that little core out, that little part. They just cut it out, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting this cabbage into the pot. And again, it'll be a pot full, but once the heat hits it, just like with collards, the cabbage will wilt down. And the good thing about cabbage, you've only got to cook them probably... Usually I cook my cabbage a good 20 minutes. Because you don't want them too mushy, and then you don't want them too, too crunchy. It just depends. So we're just going to put these in, let them wilt down, and then we're going to mix them up in that juice and let them steam for about a good 20 minutes. So we'll be right back. 